more than 65,000 women around the world claim they suffer from breast implant illness. They're connecting on a private page on Facebook. It's a chronic condition that's not a medically recognized diagnosis. But these women claim their elective surgery caused them debilitating illnesses. So I'm making this video. It is the 21st of February, late evening, and I'm exhausted. Um, I had my consultation today to get my breast explanted, and she was awful. She didn't believe in breast implant illness. It is amazing to me the bedside manner of some of these doctors. This is the second doctor that I've been to. They just mocked me the entire time. They basically said that my tattoos were the reason that I was sick and sleep 13 hours a day and not be able to eat certain foods and have rosacea and redness in my face and acne flare-ups. It's hard to explain to somebody who has never had silicone in their body, who's never had silicone and saline implants in their body. It's exhausting mentally. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Shay. If you do not already know who I am, and if you do, hello again. It's nice to see you, even though I can't really see you, but I know that you're watching. So for this video, we are talking yet again about breast implants. Why? Because it's important. So I'm super excited about this video because I'm officially 10 months post explant, and I thought, what better time than right now to do an update on how I'm feeling, like a healing update. I thought it'd be really cool to talk about like all the aspects of my healing that I went through over the 10 months. A couple of things that I wanna hit on are diet, fitness, and some of the supplements that I take. But before I go on this very long rant about how I healed, I wanted to give y'all some perspective into how I was feeling mentally and physically a little over a year ago. It is the 24th of February, it's about 8 p.m. Today was really bad. I woke up with the worst migraine I've ever had um, and my moving numbness actually came back. It hasn't been going on for like three months and I'm so foggy right now, I can't even have a conversation with myself. My acne has broken out so bad uh, this just constant frontal lobe headache. It's just not going away. Really light sensitive this morning. Woke up, was very nauseous because of the migraine. It's just this constant pressure, but this is where I'm at. So it's March 19th and I'm currently sitting outside of a therapist's office because my anxiety has gotten so bad. Thursday is my consultation with Dr. Wallace to get these toxic bags out of my chest. I read a story about a woman who had a baby in this silicone somehow got into the baby's system and he was in the NICU for like three months and I don't personally have any children yet, but thinking ahead to the kids that I do wanna have, they deserve to be healthy, so I need to do what I need to do now to remove these and make my body silicone free. So prayers for that. So back in May of 2019, I had a breast explant with total capsulectomy, which means they take every last remnant of the capsule out of your body. I had no lift and the doctor told me that since I'm 24, that my body is gonna bounce back and the elasticity in my skin wouldn't require me to get a lift. So I trusted him, didn't get a lift, and I'm so glad I didn't pay the extra money because my body really did bounce back naturally. Something that I did really want to touch on was the level of pain that I went through. I wanted to talk about the pain post-implant and then the pain that I experienced post-explant. So I want to start off with post-implant. I experienced just a couple things. I thought it was going to be way worse, but I had tightness in my chest and it became kind of hard to breathe. Then my back muscles had felt like they'd been like stretched apart 
But other than that, it wasn't that bad. I had lost a lot of sensation in my breast from them cutting away at the tissue to put the implant in. But post-implant wasn't really that bad. Post-explant was a little bit different because there was a lot more dissection. So I experienced the same tightness in my chest that I had before with implant. Um, but this time I had drains and the drain ports were incredibly uncomfortable for the first week that I had them in. Also, my shoulders were incredibly sore. I was, I was carrying myself hunched over, I think, to protect my chest. I would say that post-explant for me was a lot more difficult pain-wise to deal with. So since I have explanted, I've become super conscious of what I'm putting in, on, and even around my body. But I also want to be flexible and realistic about the foods that I both make and eat when I'm out, as well as the products that I use. But that's going to be a whole nother video. So that's enough of me rambling. Let's get on with the video. So one of the things that I really took a look at was my diet. I've always really cared about eating healthy, but I never really dove deep into the ingredients and what was in my food. So after doing a lot of research, I decided that plant-based was gonna be the best route for me. I don't really wanna call it a diet because as cheesy and cliche as it sounds, is it's really a lifestyle for me and this is like genuinely how I eat. So plant-based consists mostly or entirely of foods derived from plants. This includes vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, and fruits. So some of the things that I do not eat are meat products, dairy, and soy. But I'm not vegan, because that's way too hard. Sometimes I will eat shrimp occasionally, or seafood in general, and I do consume eggs. And this is something that I did because it worked for me, and I was also trying to get rid of my hormonal acne, and realized that when I cut out dairy, soy, and meat products, and I increased my veggie intake. I saw amazing results, I felt great, and I realized that I was recovering more quickly from my workouts. Dairy was a huge contributor to my hormonal acne. I feel like my body just reacted to it in a negative way. A lot of dairy cows are treated with artificial hormones, and those hormones can enter into their milk supply, and in turn, when you drink the milk, it's suggested that those hormones may throw your hormones off balance. Thus creating acne, which I do not want. So this next topic has always been a huge part of my life, and I think that it always will be, and it's something that I gained a new perspective on, which is fitness. After explanting, I really learned to be gentle and kind to my body, which was something that I was not before. I was really hard on myself, and I just learned that it's really important just to get your body moving, and that missing one workout is not the end of the world. But don't get me wrong, because when I'm in the gym, I am in the gym. I love a good sweat session. I love practically killing myself in the gym. But at the end of the day, you also have to remember that your body needs time to recover, you need to nourish it, you need to feed it, and you need to give it rest. I also learned the importance that fitness plays in healing. I learned that physical activity, it can reduce the level of inflammatory markers in your blood. And this actually helps reduce inflammation and really help promote healing. So like I talked about in my very first video, I would walk on the treadmill for about an hour a day, which I really wasn't trying to work out. I was just trying to get my blood flowing, trying to heal the area where I got my breast taken out. It can also prevent damage from free radicals. And for me, that meant eliminating the damage that my breast implants left behind. I've really learned how to be gentle and patient with my body. So to tie into diet and fitness, I wanted to share some of the supplements that I take. And these are all doctor prescribed supplements. Something that I didn't wanna do that I had done previously was take supplements that I didn't need and that I was just basically wasting money on just because I thought that I needed them. I really didn't consult a doctor and I really didn't do any research in terms of the vitamins and supplements that I was putting into my body. But when I did finally do research, I did find out that it is possible to take too much of a supplement. Something that I really strive to do is to get all my vitamins and my minerals from the foods that I eat. I'm a huge foodie, like, like all I wanna do is eat. But there are definitely instances when you do need supplements. Take me for example, I moved from very sunny Florida to a very dark and gloomy place. It's so gloomy. So I was lacking a lot of sun and I was starting to feel really, really tired. So I went to my doctor and requested a full blood panel workup. Basically they tested my thyroid for vitamin B12 deficiency and for vitamin D. 
and they also did a complete blood count. So what they found was that I had a vitamin B12 and a vitamin D deficiency. So they put me on cod liver oil, which is high in vitamin D, and then they put me on a B12 supplement. Along with that, I also take magnesium oxide, which is for my migraines. If you do decide to explant, just be really kind to your body and just listen to it. I promised to give myself a year of full healing before I made any type of judgment to my body. And every time I thought of being like nitpicky or just scrutinizing my body, I would just throw compliments at it. There are some days that are really easier than others, but here I am almost 10 months post-op and I'm super grateful for where I'm at. Riley sleeps through all my videos. Oh, you sleepy. You were sleeping. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Just won't go back to your bed.